home early today to do a steering box for a gentleman and that's the old steering box and that's all the all the goodies out of it there was no balls left hardly and what he needs to do is replace this main steering shaft now that main steering shaft is no longer available this one here so it's 590 millimeters and the only one we can buy is 630 or 20 millimeters and so to get this tractor going you just can't buy it they're not making that shaft anymore at all so what do I think I'm going to do for this fella is we're going to part this off here then we're going to machine it back with a spline so we have a spline to go up into the other piece and that will hold it true and then we'll braze or weld the centre. So look, that's the only f fix I can see. I know it's on steering, but um, there's only a tractor around his home. It's not out registered on the road or anything like that, but I believe that's the only fix we can do for the gent. The, the bottom ends here, the worm on the new one is slightly longer, which that's not going to cause a problem. We can actually choose which section of that we use. So if we line the bottoms up, that would be okay. And the top ends here, the other option is to machine this flat right down to here, then put the groove for the umbrella and cut this thread and then there's a taper and a keyway for the, for the steering wheel to go on. And I think the best option just to keep that all correct in the right distance is just cut and shut through the middle here so it's not power steering it's only armstrong steering so anyway i might chuck it up in the lathe and i'll i'll jump into it i've chucked it up just in the three jaw we'll just see how fast we go and part him off The reason we did it in the thick section was just more meat, got to be stronger. We'll just smooth off this edge here. chamfer on the edge Put a centre bore up here, and then we'll bore up in there 
and make a hole for the shaft to sit up so it stays nice and true. Alright, we'll drill the one size under half inch hole here. Okay, we'll chuck a half inch ream up there. Give it a bit of a blow, clean him up. Lots of slip and slide now, our slowest speed is V1 So we'll get a set up and we'll drop a drop a ream down it just to bring it to half inch nice and even to ream out but there was a little bit of metal came. Okay, one end done. We'll put the other end, chuck it up now and we'll put a little male spindle and we'll go from there. I don't have any gauge pins at half an inch but I have an unused, oh I have a, a drill with no marks on it so we'll just see Oh, that's close. That'll bump together nicely, I believe. I wouldn't mind that going a little bit further. But yeah, it could go slightly further, but it must be a little bit of wear on the ring, but that's good. We'll work with that. Well, we've, we've cut the shaft, and we've parted it off here. We've put a chamfer there for the welding. We've got the bottom end here lining up. We've got the shoulder for the bearing lining up. So now, we need to mark where we cut it off. So if we machine this back, put a shoulder there with, and leave a spigot of about 625, 5 eighths of an inch, 16 mils in mile in kilometres an hour. And we leave a little sprocket, a little spigot there, slightly oversized. We can chamfer this corner here we can take this over into the press and press it together, check that it's true, and if it is, we'll, um, I probably won't weld, I'll probably silver solder or braze the shaft up, and the reason for that is I feel if I weld it, it might pull, but look, I'll, I'll address that as I get closer to it. I might be able to clamp it down hard to the bench and, and just give it a little tack and make sure it stays true for us, so. So anyway, we'll put this end up in the chuck now, and make ourselves a little step so we can press it up in there. Right, we'll just do a little run down to the paint line. There's the paint line there. Dancing around the camera I am at the moment. So we should be able to run that at about inch shafts. Using carbide, we should be able to run her up to 600 easy enough.
60s ago. I'll just go nice and steady here. Two thousand interference, see. Eh? there and the shaft's warm at the moment so we'll probably come good right well there's the shaft that's all done we docked him off and we might polish this a little bit more yet and this is the other piece and the idea is to get that up in there and we'll we'll polish this shaft a little bit yet and let it cool down probably and um yeah, we'll put some goo on there, then stick him together. See how we go for length. Well, I'll have it over in the 50 ton press now, and I'll start putting it together. Oh, we're very close to true. So we'll try and sneak him together a bit more. Right, we've got it all pressed together, and um, it has it has a slight whoop in it this way, and this is the high spot. So what the idea is, we're going to tack the high spot, and then try and clamp it, clamp it straight round the other way. Um, it's not much, but it's noticeable on the ball down the bottom end. It probably won't matter because it's got little pins that just let it slop around a bit. But anyway, if we're going to do something, we'll do it as best we can. So. We'll put a little tack there and see what we can come up with from there. Put the earth right on the job.
tight. So we'll let that cool a little bit and then we'll we'll run the ruler down the side and just see how we're going. Usually when you weld it'll pull so it should pull up at the ends. Pretty good there now. Yeah, just a little bit. Yep, still out. Just a bit. So we'll give it a run through here and it'll pull it that way as well. But we're very close. There you go, we line the shoulder up and the bottom up. That's our shaft done. There's plenty of room in the tube for that weld, so that'll be good and strong. So we'll start assembling. Well, that's a new shaft poking through. And there's a bearing race I've popped on there. But we have to get it back a little bit. And we've got all these ball bearings we have to feed in. So we drop them around. a little bit. That'll centralise the shaft. And did you know this kit for the top of the David Brown steering column is the same kit that you use on the Massey Ferguson 35 and 135 I think it says on the top. Yep, 35 and 135 top steering kit. So it's the same one. I never knew that until we got the kit here, so that's a good thing. Now the nut, this is the nut for the other side, for, it goes down onto the bearings to hold them captive. It has an o-ring in it to help seal. seals on this housing here so what we should be able to do is get this nut down there and actually get all the balls in in order I'm worried the other end is going to fall off <laughs> I don't think it will if I do it right I'll oh, mouth the right way so Normally I'd clean all this housing and that, but the fellow doesn't want the bottom shaft pulled out. He's a um, bit of a battler, trying to do it on the cheap, so fair enough I suppose. That should have the bearings just snug up at home. And this is the recirculating ball steering. And there's a new nut on the bottom. And what holds that in is two little retainers, so we have to put the retainers in. Line him up, he 
you can line him up sideways and pop the retainer that way. And then on the other side, there's another one. And that ball that just fell out, that's just about exactly what I didn't want to happen. So we'll pop him. There's enough grease in there to hold it in if I do it right. I should be able to bring that back. Just enough. Through here. I suppose these patch up jobs are just that patch up jobs, aren't they? But anyway, you help somebody out. We've got the nut all adjusted up. We can go turn to turn until the camera comes on. I'll try and get the get the nut in about the centre somewhere, about the centre of the shaft. Now we've got a little bit of movement there, we just need to take that out. That's all you need. You don't have to have preload on it. Um, we've got to put grease in here yet, but there is a lock washer. The old shaft had a long key to go down here. And the lock washer is a split washer. You can see a little gap just in here. And one folds one way over this nut, then the other one folds the other way over the lock nut which we haven't got out yet and so one each way over here but um, this little tag that's um, on this washer won't be usable but we should be able to still lock them up together and fold the tags over to stop them moving so they won't lose um, lose tension on the bearing so but that's okay that's that's feeling okay if we can turn that with our hands now well the the steering wheel with the purchase you have on a 17 inch steering wheel, well that'll be plenty. So I'll go and I'll knock this out and um, we'll put it on and then we'll lock this top nut up. Mm -hmm.